Hello, my name is Andrew Just, and this is the introductory presentation to Forecast Builder. And as this slide says, Forecast Builder is laying a foundation for IDSS via a consistent science-based process. Now on this slide, you'll see the methodology, what goes into Forecast Builder, and some examples of snow and ice accumulation that occurred across Central Region during the winter of 2016-2017. You will learn more about Forecast Builder during the course of this presentation and other presentations in the training plan. So before we talk about Forecast Builder, I need to give you a little bit of background on the Central Region Grid Methodology Team and its projects and accomplishments over the past uh, several years. The team itself is composed of 80% NWSCO members across diverse climate regimes, along with a couple of SUs to help provide the science background. The team was formed in 2008 to help promote and or develop techniques that are efficient, improve consistency, and improve accuracy. Now over the course of time we've gone through various policies and experiments. One of the biggest ones that we went through was during the 2011 and 2012 where we implemented the approach of utilizing model blends as a common starting point that also had to come with the idea of standardizing smart nets to ensure that the model blends were the same from office to office. After that we went through some other policies and experiments such as the enhanced short-term forecast and the QPF WPC experiment and then here in 2016 the team created and deployed forecast builder across central region which brought about two things. One was to connect the enhanced short-term forecast policy in the day 4 through 7. There was a gap between there, so we had this period 3 through 14 policy. And then also deploy a standardized GFE methodology. So what is Forecast Builder? Simply put, it's a forecast management tool that guides the forecaster by utilizing common tools, science, and process. It utilizes a blend of models to provide a consistent common starting point. And as noted on the previous slide, the common starting point idea has been in place in Central Region for numerous years as it's been very successful. There's also a cron-based version of Forecast Builder provided that handles the initialization for the common starting point. After that common starting point gets put in your forecast, then the forecasters can go in and make targeted adjustments and there's tool pro tools provided to help that out. You can also bring in observations into the forecast via Forecast Builder to ensure that the current grids reflect reality. Forecast Builder within it employs sound science to help derive snow amount, ice accumulation, and weather grids, therefore ensuring internal consistency. And lastly, this currently in center age in terms of an experiment combined with Forecast Builder, there's this um, new extension called Hazard Builder to help produce IDSS graphics. Again, it's just an experiment. So the Forecast Builder program, while created and deployed by the Central Region Grid Methodology Advisory Team, also had a lot of collaboration to go into it. These are a variety of different groups that were involved, such as the Upper Mississippi Valley Sioux Community, the MBM Weather Grid team, the National SmartNet team, various teams in Central Region, including the NWCO and management. But more importantly, Forecast Builder has been improved by continuous feedback from forecasters and management in the field. And again, it's across diverse climate regimes, from flat to marine and mountain. And therefore, Forecast Builder remains an evolutionary process. So the idea behind Forecast Builder is that it's really here to provide an ability to share across the weather service forecaster expertise, scientific research, and technological improvements. Again, kind of going back to a couple slides ago, the idea behind Forecast Builder is that forecasters go in and apply a targeted approach to making adjustments to the, com to the common starting point, and those impact actions for our stakeholders and customers. The ultimate goal for Forecast Builder is to allow you, the forecaster, to have more time for IDSS activities, as these are growing very rapidly over the last several years. You have more time for training, 
metodological analysis, research. Allow you to spend more time in the short-term forecast, so including new areas like digital aviation services, because this is where the trust in the forecast begins. And be able to do all of these activities while improving consistency and accuracy. Now, Forecast Builder is a very has a very big scope, and on this slide depicts all the various areas that Forecast Builder affects. You have a general area for science, different things like snow, ice, and fram. Fram being the freeze and rain accumulation model, which helps uh, the ice accumulation. There's these various integrity checks, computation of blowing snow, thunder, all those things going in there. You've got interactions with management, WSEO, development training. There's development going on for fire weather. There's obviously the tech side. There's aviation parts. There's, again, the DSS side. So, again, it's a very big project, uh, but I think it's, it's very good in that aspect that it allows a lot of expertise in various areas to get ingested and shared amongst the entire weather service all within one program. So how does this methodology work for Forecast Builder anyway? So it's a multi-step process. The first step the forecasters you go through is you look at the foundation grids. These are the th items that form the beginning part of everything downstream. So these are the ones that you are going to be spending the most of your time with. These include the temperatures, the wind, the wind gust, sky, dew points, RH, BOP, QPF, snow ratio, and in the case of mountains, snow level. After you're complete with those, you'll jump into a top-down step where you look at max well bubble off, prob ice present, prob refreeze sleet, and road temperature. After this, much of the rest of this process going on is all going to be derived. Uh, I did want to comment that these grids that are in the foundation and top down step can be initialized. And when you do work with these ones, you want to apply a targeted approach. So moving along, you will then create the precipitation types, the accumulation grids like snow and ice accumulation, and integrity checks, kind of like an office's finalized procedure, it takes place right here, ensuring you know your temperatures aren't greater than max T or colder than your min T, you know, create, calculating a parent temperature, things of that nature. Those all take place in this step. Again, it's a completely derived, just blow right through it, grids update. Go on to the non-precipitation type step from here. Put in things like your blowing snow, your thunder, fog, um, frost. Those all get added in that step. And finally, the creation of the weather grid. Again, it's a completely derived process. No editing needed. You know, we acknowledge that there remains issues with models and like and even the analysis things like the IRMA, the RTMA, the National Blend of Models, other models, etc. However, the Central Region Grid Methodology team believes that by directing our full forecast feedback towards these concerns, we will help improve them quicker. This process again should facilitate usage and adoption more completely throughout the NWS. So I kind of made this image here with a bunch of firefighters with the holes providing the feedback. If you have OBS issues, you want to get those to the IRMA RTMA group. Model issues, bring them to the MBM group. And then finally, if there are science issues or to temporarily correct OBS model problems, bring those to the Forecast Builder group. And the Forecast Builder group will also interact with the NBM group and the IRMA group if there are things that need to be you know, communicated to them as well. Now there's a decent amount of training and support here provided. You have a full training plan that can be added on the CLC for each forecaster. There are various topics for science, such as snow ratio, the top-down approach, the FRAM ice accumulation model. There's a lot to learn there about the background science going into Forecast Builder. There's also some nebology and the underlying probability of weather type methodology that helps get you to the various probability precipitation types, things for the non-precipitation types, so take a look at that 
And then there's also some job sheets and a pseudo West simulation using GFE data in a service backup mode setting. You can also find real-time support 24-7 via uh, the Forecast Builder VLAB site, the address posted here. There's also the CRG Matt NWS chat room available. You can contact the Forecast Builder group via the email address shown here. And there's also a feedback survey. And your regional ROC NWS chat room can be there for forecast collaboration assistance. So where's Forecast Builder heading? Forecast Builder heading. The goal here is that the National Blend of Models will be the common starting point initialization. All offices would perform digital aviation services through Forecast Builder. Population of marine related grids would also be perform performed through Forecast Builder. Again, that's an area in current development. Another area in current development is the population of fire weather grids. So you initialize like fire mix and height, transport winds, Hayden did X all through Forecast Builder. We want to get some improvements in precipitation type forecasting and research is ongoing with that project. And one of the big ones here is just a culture emphasis towards enhancing the short term forecast. Again, that is where our trust in the forecast begins for our partners. And there's a lot of DSS that happens in that period. And that includes beginning production of one hour QPF snow mount and ice accumulation forecasts. So in conclusion, Forecast Builder, right out, going to say it's not perfect. Um, but we, you know, we've got the beginning here going of a foundation for IDSS via that consistent science-based process. We're going to keep, keep Im improving the program. It's an evolution. Get more science. Get more techniques. Get more forecaster experience in there to help make it better. So we, the grid, Central Region Grid Team, would love to have more offices and regions come on board. Western Region has, has started, and they've already influenced the process via utilization of snow level for precipitation type production. You can further improve not only Forecast Builder, but, NB, but the National Blend of Models and IRMA and our TMA as well. And again, what's nice about Forecast Builder is it's great to spread the wealth of forecast no, forecaster knowledge and experience to all offices. And here again is a variety of links here for questions, feedback, documentation. I'll pause on this slide for a little bit. And we thank you very much for listening to this module.